Hey, hey, Disney fans, planners, and reluctant visitors. I'm Becky, and this is Touring Plans Teaches. This week, we've got Disney World Resorts 103. We're going to talk all about your different views from rooms you might have and locations of those rooms within the resort. This can be really important if it's important to you what you see out of your door in the morning or how long it takes you to get back and forth from the lobby or transportation. We've actually got a lot of data this week, which makes me excited. We're going to talk about price differences between the different view or location types, as well as satisfaction differences to see whether it might be worth your money to upgrade. So let's jump into it. Throughout this week's episode, I'm going to be talking a lot about requesting a room that's right for you, because no matter what the view or location type, you could end up in a wide variety of places at any resort. So requesting a specific room might help you get closer to what you actually want or need. Thankfully, Touring Plans has a tool for that, and it's called our Room Finder and Room Request tool. So let's take a look at how that works so that you know how you can use it once you find a room that you like. When we navigate to our Room Finder tool, we'll see that we can pick any resort on property that we might want to request a room for. So in our example, I'll go ahead and click into Animal Kingdom Lodge Jumbo House. Once I pick a resort, then I can filter by a bunch of different things that might be important to me. I can filter to a specific view type, so maybe I want Savannah instead of Standard. I can filter by the average rate for that room. Maybe I have a pretty strict budget and I just want to find things that I can afford specifically. I could filter by walking distance, either to the lobby or transportation, to only get rooms returned that are close to the lobby or maybe far away if I don't want to be nearby. I can filter to floor to make sure I'm not using stairs or elevators, or I can even filter by average sound level, so to make sure that I don't get those rooms that are really loud, like the ones by the pools. Once I filter, uh, then I can get a bunch of rooms returned back to me that meet my needs. Or you can even go easy mode and go down to filter to the touring plans picks. So these are rooms that are pre-selected by touring plan staff as meeting most people's needs. They're generally pretty quiet, conveniently located, and good views. So if you want to go that way, you can use that as your filter too. Once I filter and I find a room that I think might meet my needs, I can click on it. When I do that, I can see actual pictures from that room. And I can see other users' comments, so people that have stayed there before and what they thought about the room. Bonus, if all of that looks good, I see the pictures, I see all of the information about the room and some comments, and I want that exact room from this tool you can put in that you would like to submit a room request for your upcoming vacation. And so when the time is right, we'll send that request. There's no guarantee that you'll get that exact room, but it at least gives those folks that assign rooms out an idea of what your needs are. Let's kick things off with looking at our value resorts. Now, we're not gonna see any data about Art of Animation, and that's because at Art of Animation, you only get to choose whether you're staying in a Little Mermaid standard room or in one of the family suites. There aren't preferred family suites or preferred Little Mermaid rooms, so there aren't really any selections to make. It's just what room type that you want to have. But things start to get interesting at the all-star resorts. So this is what most of our charts are gonna look like in today's video. You're gonna see some satisfaction scores on the y-axis, and those are always gonna go from something like four to five. Five is a perfect satisfaction score. Everyone is super satisfied with their room. Four is still pretty good, but the higher on this chart, the more satisfied people are with their room. So that's what you want to aim for. Down here on the bottom, you see the different room types that you can select at each resort. So at each all-star, you can either choose a standard room or a preferred room. And if you choose preferred, that of course comes with an increased cost. So you can see what that cost is on average each night at that resort for that upgrade. So at the All-Stars, you're going to be paying approximately $20 a night to upgrade to a preferred room if that's what you want to do. When we look at this chart, we can see that sometimes that might be worth it. Uh, so at both All-Star Movies and All-Star Music, satisfaction does increase a little bit when you choose a preferred room. But those black bars 
are our error bars. So in statistics, that means we aren't really sure where that blue dot lives, but it's somewhere in between the bars. So if the black bars overlap, that means that we can't really be confident that those averages are very different. They kind of statistically overlap. So really, there are no statistically significant differences between standard and preferred rooms at any of the all-star resorts. What it does is save you walking distance. So if that's important to you, this might be an upcharge that you want to do. Preferred rooms are all closer to the lobby and transportation at these massive all-star resorts. As an example, here we can see the view from room 8957 at All-Star Movies. This is a preferred room, so the view is not what you're paying for here, obviously. Uh, you can see a little bit of a pool area and a support structure. Ooh, But what you are paying for is the location. So this is the layout of the All-Star Movies resort. And this blue dot here on building eight is where this room is. So it's really close to the lobby and transportation. And so if you just want that walk every morning and night as you go to the buses to get to the parks, instead of, say, walking all the way to the end of building seven every night, then maybe that's something that you can be willing to pay for. Next, let's look at Pop Century. So here we have a pretty similar story. All of the satisfaction scores, no matter what the location or view, are very, very similar. And the upgrade costs aren't very much. If you want a pool view, a standard pool view, it's only $8 per night more than the standard view. But if you want a preferred room, it's $15 a night more. Now at Pop Century, uh, there are preferred rooms in almost every decade. Remember from one of our previous videos, Pop Century is organized by decade. Uh, the only decades that don't have preferred rooms are the 80s and 90s. So I guess if you really, really, really don't want to stay in the 80s or 90s, you could pay for a preferred room. But otherwise, it's not going to gain you much. Uh, and that's because preferred rooms are close to the lobby, uh, but they're not close to the Skyliner necessarily. And that's a really important feature at Pop Century now because that's a really quick mode of transportation to both Epcot and Hollywood Studios. So very, very hard to recommend a preferred room at Pop Century. Next, let's move along to our moderate resorts. And we're going to start with the Port Orleans resorts. These are sister resorts that are right next to each other, uh, but they're very different in terms of theme and satisfaction and layout. So you might want to choose one or the other depending on what you like. Satisfaction scores are higher at French Quarter, and it's a much more compact resort. So you'll see here that there aren't any preferred rooms at French Quarter. That's because everything's close to the lobby and transportation. Really, all you're doing is selecting your view. So there is a river view you can pay a little bit more for. Pool views are generally the most expensive, but they're also the least satisfactory, um, maybe because French Quarter is a pretty relaxed resort and the pools are where you're going to get the most noise. So I wouldn't recommend splurging for a pool view at French Quarter. Riverside, on the other hand, is a really huge sprawling resort, so very spread out. You could do lots of walking if you end up in the wrong room. So they do have a preferred room category at Riverside, which is a $58 per night upcharge compared to a standard room. That's pretty expensive compared to the base rate for this resort as a whole. And a river view is going to be even more expensive just by $2 upcharge compared to preferred rooms, uh, but you're paying for that water view. So that's $60 a night more than a standard view at Riverside. So let's take a look at what some of these river views at each of these resorts could be like. Our first one is room 5120, and this is at French Quarter. So again, this is the smaller, more compact resort. Beautiful view of a river. Uh, a lot of people really enjoy these rooms, like these relaxing views, very different than being in the parks all day. Pretty relaxing to come home and see this at the end of a busy park day. Um, this, on the other hand, is the view from room 8254 at Riverside. So that's the other resort, and it is a river view. So bonus points if you can view the river here. It's actually, eh, there's like a little bit of a reflection of a tree that you can see. So you're paying $60 a night more for this view, um, which may or may not be worth it to you. 
The other thing to keep in mind is the location at each of these resorts. So I put blue dots on these maps again for those same two rooms. So on the left here, we see Riverside. It's really small. The blue dot is literally right on the river, and it's still very close to the lobby and transportation. So all around, a really nice room. So go find it on the room finder and request it if you're staying at French Quarter. Riverside, on the other hand, uh, we've got our room up here that's the river view. It is pretty much right on the river. You've got a courtyard in between you and the river, still a little bit hard to see. And you've still got quite a hike uh, to get to the lobby and or transportation. You're going around the giant building to get to your closest transportation. And to get to the lobby, you have to cross a couple bridges and go around a big pool. Um, so you're paying a lot more, not super convenient. Uh, that's why, especially at these bigger resorts, it's going to be important to use that room finder to find something that fits your needs specifically. Next, we're moving on to Caribbean Beach, which is another big spread out resort. Here we can see actually our first significant increase in satisfaction, and that's between the standard room and the water and pool view. And the water and pool view has the highest satisfaction of any room type at Caribbean Beach, even better than those preferred rooms, which might seem weird, but for $32 a night upcharge over the base rate compared to standard rooms, maybe that's worth it. And let's look at why that could be. First, we're going to look at those preferred rooms and see why maybe those don't have the higher satisfaction. First, they're a significant upcharge. That's $101 a night more than a standard room at Caribbean Beach to get a preferred room. And what does that get you? Like most resorts, it gets you close to the lobby and to transportation. But at Caribbean Beach, the big plus is the Skyliner and potentially being close to the Riviera Resort, which has even better dining options. But those preferred rooms don't get you either of those things. Preferred rooms are actually the furthest ones away from the Skyliner and they don't have very easy access to the Riviera Resort. So maybe the preferred rooms aren't the way to go. On the other hand, here's a water and pool view room at Caribbean Beach has a nice view, looks pretty relaxing, like you could actually be on a Caribbean beach. It's room 5511. Let's look at where that is on a map. So again, blue dot down here in the corner, Riviera Resort is right next to it, and the Skyliner Station as well. So it's right there, uh, easy access to things that are beneficial to the guests that stay there. One caveat to this is there are water and pool view rooms in almost every building at Caribbean Beach. So just because you request water and pool view doesn't mean that you're going to have this awesome location. So again, another reason to use that room request tool uh, to get you closer to the Skyliner if that's something that's important to you. Our final moderate resort is Coronado Springs. And Coronado Springs is interesting because you have sort of the original resort and then the Grand Destino Tower. And if you want to get in that new tower, it's gonna cost you. Uh, it's at least $84 a night more than the original resort. Uh, but the tower is more centrally located. It has newer, nicer rooms that are built to cater towards conference attendees. So if that's important to you, you could make that upcharge to hop up to the tower. Um, and you do see significantly better satisfaction scores if you do that. But we see something interesting here as well. If you upgrade to the tower, if you pay even more to get that water view, your satisfaction actually goes down. And we'll talk about why in a little bit. First, let's talk about the difference between standard and preferred rooms at Coronado Springs. Here we can see the map of the resort again. And you can see down here is the Grand Destino Tower. So if you want the tower rooms, that's where you're going to end up. Highlighted, you see all of the preferred rooms, which are all in a block. Now, before the tower existed, this was a pretty good location. You're right next to the lobby. But something that most people don't notice at first is you still have a hike to transportation if you had a preferred room. You either have to go all the way up here to a bus stop or through El Centro and by the tower to get to transportation. So now that's not exactly easy to walk to anymore. It's not terrible by any means, but this could contribute to why we don't see any increase in satisfaction. Now let's talk about these tower rooms. As you can see on the map, uh, we have water view rooms and standard rooms. Water view rooms are up here and we'll look over Lago Dorado. 
the standard view seemingly just look over a parking lot and who would want that? Um, but if we pull up a view from our room finder tool for one of these standard view rooms, this is 9167, uh, and again, you use sort of your magnifying glass or something here, I actually spy two different theme parks from this room. So I can see Spaceship Earth, I can see the Tower of Terror, that means I probably have fireworks views at night, and so if it's me, I am not paying the extra money to get a water view room because I want to be in the standard ones and see those fireworks at night and see Spaceship Earth when I wake up in the morning. So if you are staying at Coronado Springs, highly recommend the upgrade to the tower if you can afford it, but stick to the standard room and not the water view. Now we're going to talk about our deluxe resorts. These are the resorts where you're already paying a lot of money even just to stay there. So any upgrades are a little bit of salt in the wound, and you want to make sure that they're really worth it for your vacation. We're going to start off with the Crescent Lake resorts. So these are the Beach Club, Yacht Club, and Boardwalk. And here we can see any upgrades to view types at this level are increasingly expensive, which makes sense. Uh, and we can look and see that the standard view rooms maybe aren't as great, especially at the beach club and boardwalk. At Yacht Club, you're not going to see any standard rooms on this graph, but that's just because there are very few of them that are categorized that way, and so we don't have many results from there, not enough to even put it on a graph. At all three resorts, those standard views are typically going to get you a view of a roof <laughs> or a parking lot or a bus stop. Um, not necessarily terrible, but probably not what you're looking to see out of your window in the morning at an expensive resort. But in order to upgrade to something like a pool or lake view at Beach Club is $120 a night, $110 a night, depending on the season, um, and similar costs at Yacht Club and Boardwalk Inn. So could this be worth it? Maybe. But let's look at some examples to help you make a better decision. First, we can see an example of a standard view. So this is pretty stereotypical for all three of these resorts. This is room 3724 at Beach Club specifically, and you can see this gorgeous roof with some construction cones and flags on top of it for added color, I guess. Um, this could cost you something like $800 a night to have this view, um, but maybe you could request something a little different, or you could upgrade. So here's one example of that fully upgraded view at Beach Club. This is a pool slash lake view. And again, I don't know if I'm like you, I see the very corner of a pool from this room and definitely no lake, but at least it's not a roof. So that's something. But at the exact same level as room 4563. So I would be paying the exact same price as that previous room to get this view instead if I knew what to request. And so this is a pool lake view and you actually get that view of the lake and the boardwalk area. Pretty gorgeous. Um, so if it's me, I'm going to be requesting this one. So not all of those water views are created equal. Here's another good example of this. Now we've moved over to the Yacht Club. This is room 4233, and this is a water view. <laughs> so there is technically water in this picture, um, but mostly it's that big cone shape that's blocking a lot of the pool and the lake. And you, on average, are paying about $1,000 a night for this room at the Yacht Club. Um, so that could be potentially pretty disappointing. But again, for the exact same price, you could request room 4065 or something similar and end up with a view like this. Um, for my $1,000 a night, I would much rather have this view than the other one. Very similar story at Boardwalk Inn. Actually, at Boardwalk, most of those water views are real gorgeous water views. There's not much else to give you uh, at the Boardwalk. If it has water in the picture, it's going to be a pretty good view. This is room 3217. The trade-off at Boardwalk is walking, so that's easy to remember because it's in the name. If we look at the picture here, Boardwalk has a really sort of awkward shape. Uh, all of your standard rooms are going to be over here without much to look at unless they're facing a garden, in which case that's a little bit of an upcharge. All of your water view rooms have to be along the water, um, and they're a pretty long walk along that U-shape to get you to those, so you're trading off some of that walking for that beautiful view.
Now let's move on to the monorail resorts. So all of these resorts are close to the Magic Kingdom, and we're going to start with the Contemporary, which is the closest to the Magic Kingdom. So if you're staying in the Contemporary, you probably want one of two things. Very quick access to the park, or a beautiful view of the park. And so what can we pay for to get those two things? We can see here that our standard rooms are already pretty expensive. I didn't put a baseline here, but they're pretty expensive. To upgrade all of the way to that theme park view, what a lot of people want, it's an extra $240 a night on average on top of the already expensive prices just to stay at the Contemporary itself. So maybe I don't want a theme park view. What can I get for that standard price? For the standard price, I'm going to be in the pink highlighted building here. So this is the South Garden Wing. Actually, the standard and the garden views are all in this building. None of them are in that main structure. So that means I'm pretty far away from any dining options. There aren't any in the garden wing. Also pretty far away from the monorail and from the walkway to the Magic Kingdom. So I'm losing out on a few of those benefits, even though in the grand scheme of things, I'm still pretty stinking close to the Magic Kingdom. But let's say I go ahead and I pay for that theme park view. So I'm paying my expensive uh, contemporary rate and another $240 a night on top of that to get into a theme park view. This is the view you could have. So this is what everyone is salivating over and what they want out of their uh, window at the Contemporary. This is room 4747. And so it really is a theme park view. You've got, uh, you actually have to tilt a little bit to see it. You've got a parking lot in the foreground, but you have Space Mountain, you have the Cinderella Castle, you can see the fireworks at night. This is gorgeous. But as a cautionary tale, this is also a theme park view from the contemporary. Uh, so you're really looking out over the resort itself, the convention area. And if you crane around to the right, you could see the Magic Kingdom. But really, you've got a better view of the Grand Floridian, which is out there in the distance. So again, same price. I could be paying $12.50 a night uh, for this room, and I might not be very pleased. Not surprisingly, we have similar stories at the Polynesian and the Grand Floridian, our other monorail resorts. At the Polynesian, it's even more expensive to upgrade to that theme park view. That's partially because at the Polynesian, a lot of the good views are reserved for DVC rooms, and so you can't get into those without renting or using DVC points. Uh, so since there's a limited supply, cost can be a lot higher. So you have to pay to stay at the Polynesian and pay $320 more per night to get into that theme park view room. Grand Floridian, there's a few more Magic Kingdom view rooms, so it's not quite as expensive, $213 per night upcharge compared to that standard room. Again, not all rooms are created equal though. So this is a theme park view room from the Polynesian. This is room 1221. You are paying about $1,400 a night to stay in this room to get your really elusive theme park view. So it is technically a theme park view because, shocker, if you can't see it, uh, that right there is Cinderella's castle. So you might be able to see some fireworks from here, but there's a lot of trees and other things in the way. Uh, not exactly what I would want out of a theme park view. And because most of the best views are reserved for DVC at the Polynesian, this is actually the best example of a theme park view you'll get from the regular portion of the Polynesian Resort. Uh, so you can see a little bit of Space Mountain and a little bit of Cinderella Castle, and you at least have an unobstructed view of fireworks at night if you choose to watch those. But again, $1,400 a night for this, the best example of theme park view from the Polynesian. At Grand Floridian, you have another theme park view here, uh, where really you're looking across to the contemporary and you'd have to crane around to try to see the Magic Kingdom itself. It's a nice view of a lagoon, though, so if I was paying for, like, a river view at Riverside, I might be excited to see this, but this is an expensive room, uh, about $1,600 a night for this view right here. At that same price level, though, I could request room 7431, and then right out my window, I've got Cinderella Castle and Space Mountain, and I'm much more of a happy camper, unless it's really early in the morning and those fairies are running and tooting their horns, and then I might not be quite so happy. But hey, that's captured in the sound level, so at least I would know about it. So keep in mind, at these monorail resorts, they're already really expensive. If you want a theme park view and you're willing to pay for it, you also need to put in that room request so that you don't get stuck 
with a theme park view instead of a real one. When we move away from the monorail, but still in the Magic Kingdom area, that takes us to Wilderness Lodge, which is a really popular resort for its theming, not necessarily for its views. But we've got an interesting case here. So you have standard rooms at Wilderness Lodge, and if you upgrade all the way, an extra $245 a night upcharge is the fireworks view. So this is where you can sort of peek at the theme parks from far away and see the fireworks at night. Uh, one sneaky trick, though, is that there are several standard rooms with that fireworks view, and so we're going to talk about this as a sort of counterpoint to those really expensive theme park views at the monorail resorts. Here is one of my favorite secret rooms. This is room 5054 at Wilderness Lodge. This is a standard view. So compare that to sort of those theme park views for $1,600 a night at Grand Floridian. Uh, this room tops out the most expensive season at $900 a night. Uh, during value seasons, you could get this as low as $450 a night. As low as $450 a night. I can easily spy Cinderella Castle and Space Mountain from here. Uh, and I can pretty much guarantee you could see fireworks from here too. In fact, if you go up just one floor, so room 6054 is just on top of this one, that one is a fireworks view room uh, and requires that extra $245 a night. So for my money, I'm going down a floor and getting mostly the same view. Now it is Wilderness Lodge, so trees grow, and maybe this won't be the exact same view a couple of years from now, but for now it's a pretty easy hack to save a little bit of money, especially compared to those monorail resorts. The last deluxe resort we have to talk about is Animal Kingdom Lodge, and the upgrade to a Savannah view is actually the most popular upgrade at any resort. Uh, if you're staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge, most people want to stay on the Savannah because they want to see the animals. That's kind of the whole point of staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge. So I was actually pretty surprised at first when I saw these numbers, uh, that upgrading to a pool view or a savannah view made no difference in the satisfaction scores. You would think if you're on a savannah, you wake up to giraffes outside of your room, that that would be a pretty satisfying and happy experience. Uh, so here is why that's not exactly the case. The first is the layout of Jumbo. So you can see the gray building to the left, that's Kidani, so that's all DVC rooms. Jumbo is the white U-shape with a little bit of extra arms out here. Uh, this looks a little bit small on the screen. Jumbo is a very, very, very large resort. So some rooms are more than a quarter mile away from the lobby, even though it's all inside. You can have a hike. And those savanna rooms could be all the way at the end of these U-shapes. So they could be that full hike away from the lobby. That might not be very satisfying, even if you have those giraffes right outside of your window. Another reason is that the standard rooms can have great views too. Um, this is actually a picture that I took on one of my family's vacations when we requested one of these secret savanna rooms, and so that's actually a term you'll hear pretty regularly among the Disney community. So this is room 4210 at Jumbo, which is adjacent to the lobby. It's like three doors down, so it's a little quieter, um, but very convenient. And it's rated as a standard view, so it's cheaper, it doesn't have the upcharge for a savanna view. And yet, uh, I have animals right outside my window, and there were giraffes grazing there at night, uh, as well as other animals in the morning. It's standard because technically you're not guaranteed the animals to be in that location, and it's got that beautiful dirt road instead of a real savanna. Uh, but for my money, I will totally take this view over paying savanna rates any day. I can easily hop out to the back porch of the lodge if I want to see more animals and the real savanna. What have we learned here today? I hope I've made it clear that just selecting a preferred versus a standard room or a specific view isn't enough to make sure that you're going to be happy and that you're getting what you pay for. It's really important to give that room finder tool a chance and try it out. See if you can find a room specifically that you think will make you happy. Look at those sample views that it shows you, filter to something that will meet your needs, and even submit a room request for your upcoming trip. That way, you have more of a chance of getting something that will make your vacation even better. In our next couple of weeks, we're gonna dive into even more data to help you pick a resort and a room that's right for you. 
Next week, we're going to look at resort-wide satisfaction scores versus their average prices. So which ones are statistically good value for your money? And maybe that'll help inform where you want to stay. And the week after that, we'll be back with best buildings and most requested rooms. So which rooms are most popular with our users that you might also want to request, and which buildings specifically have higher scores than others, probably because of their locations and room types. For this week, I'm Becky. Thanks for joining me.